Many thanks for staying with us here on News Desk. And uh, in a bit, we'll be doing some business updates. But there's this story in business which uh, I think stands out for me today. And then uh, we've taken a look at it and we've decided to uh, bring it into proper perspective. Now, Finance Minister Setekwe has justified the need to tax allowances and pensions under the new Income Tax Law Act 896 2015. According to Mr. Tekpe, allowances and incomes form part of what is generally considered income. Now, he argued that the new tax law had become necessary because some taxpayers were either avoiding or evading tax by hiding their incomes in allowances and areas not taxed. Okay, I think I'll just press, put the brakes on here and try and get a, more, a lot more understanding on this from my colleague with uh, our business desk here at uh, Joy News, uh, John Kujama, who is joining me now in the studio. John, uh, thank you very much for joining us. So uh, this is the first thing that hit me when I saw this thing. Uh, exactly, as a worker so and a of I course. Do so, yeah. so aside all the taxes that are being paid, any allowance you get aside your normal salary is also mm. going to be taxed? Exactly. Why? The point is this. Let me actually set the tone for this. The reason why, the, uh, what do you call it, um, Act 898 was amended. It was actually bringing a lot more people because you used to, we, or we, we've been blaming the ministry and the tax authorities that they, they've actually, they're actually overtaxing the very people who are already paying the taxes. So in order for them to expand the tax net, as we call it, they sort of decided to bring in a lot more people and a lot more areas that they are not, I mean, tasking. One of which is these allowance. A lot, a lot of um, employees and workers do hide behind these things and then evade or avoid paying taxes. That's exactly the case. So now what they're saying is that, okay, instead of the, 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 the pay as you earn tax that you always do, mm -hmm. now bring all your allowances together, then they tax it, that's all. So everything is going to be consolidated Consolidated this time and then taxed, basically. If, if, you, if after consolidation, you exceed the taxable, then it's taxed. If you still remain within the non-taxable, you're, 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 so you're allowed threshold. to go. There's a threshold, exactly okay. so. That's basically it. It's hitherto you were not paying uh, taxes on allowances. Okay. But today, it's going to be taxed. All in the bid and effort at consolidating, I mean, our fiscal situation. You know, Ghana, we are, we are in dying need of money. Mm. So it's an attempt to also make sure the country okay. really breaks in. So a now I, I need to know the threshold and whether or not I fall within it or above it or what. So mm. we'll be coming to that. But there's another component of this that is a bit worrying for me as well. Yeah. has to do with uh, pensioners also exactly. having to pay tax on the money they'll be taking as what? Pension? Pension. Pen um, I think, let me, let, me, let me clarify this. I was okay. there on, in, in the program yesterday. Mm. That is not exactly the case. What it is is that okay. um, we, do, we, we do know, let's say, if, assuming you are, you are going on pension by age 60. After age 60, whatever is due you as your pension is not, is not taxable. But if you work beyond the age of 60? Not working beyond age okay. of 60. What, okay. it means, what, what, is it, what the law is saying is that if you should go into that your pension fund, prior to age 60 or prior to your retirement or pension, then that money will be taxable because they, it would then be considered as income and not pension. Mm. I, I hope you're getting the So the, if you, the for instance, decide it. to take early retirement... Early retirement, that amount of money will be taxable. Be taxed. Exactly. That is simple and it's 15%. I see. Period. But if, you're able to, if you wait till retirement or till pension and you go redeem that fund, it's, it's not taxable. Okay. And I think that's what is actually uh, creating the confusion here in the bathroom. Let me just state it. The, the fact is that this, that's what the law says. Okay. Pre-retirement, 15% taxable. Post-retirement, it is tax-free. Okay. John, uh, I'll be coming to you briefly. So you tell us about the thresholds you spoke of. I'm exactly. very particular about the there, money. There are others to that <laughs> probably. I mean, now, what we call corruption is now taxable. Mm. If you actually get money illegally somewhere, blah, blah, whatever it is. Once it's identifiable, it is taxable. It's also in this particular law. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll be coming to that Fred, as exactly. well. Exactly. We'll be coming to that as well. But let's speak to Godfrey Amero. He's a financial analyst and uh, a lecturer at Gimpa also. He's out of the country. He's actually in South Africa. He's joining us live now on phone with uh, a lot more thoughts on this. Uh, sir, good morning. Many thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning and good morning to you. For the ordinary Ghanaian and the ordinary worker, uh, this law, it's not, it's not one that is in our interest. Already we are paying so much in taxes and government needs to take so much more. Uh, I, I don't know, but from where you sit, uh, what do you make of this law? Well, yeah, um, 
tax and paying tax has always been a problem to um, the citizenry all over the world. And um, Ghana, as a nation, uh, our tax system is relatively, the tax rate is relatively lower compared to some other countries too. And it's very true, yes, we're paying a whole lot of uh, tax. Mm. Um, but the fact still remains that, um, that whatever you earn as an income, you need to pay tax on it. So, um, as the minister rightly said, there are some people that are taking huge allowances that they are not paying tax on. And you compare what it takes as the allowance to their salary, it's possibly even twice their salary. So, why do you just have to concentrate taxing only the uh, salary and leaving the income? Yeah. So, so, some have suggested that, that, that this, is, this is a very lazy approach taken by the government to uh, raise funds. Uh, do you agree with that? Uh, well, to some extent, but I absolutely do not think that is uh, fair because, um, well, government can do well better than what it's doing now by extending the, the tax bracket and capturing everybody into this whole tax system. Uh, my problem with this whole tax uh, introduction is the, is, is the amount that is, is being slammed on this kind of uh, tax. Getting everybody to pay tax, especially on your allowances and everything, to me personally, is fine. But my problem has to do with whether twenty percent of tax on your allowances is, is fair and also the right. Position. No, but but but, but is that is that the best way of uh, tackling uh, tax evasion or tax avoidance? Is that the best approach? It 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 might not be possibly the best, but it's one of the ways to, to get people. But the first thing is that once you get a lot of people to pay tax, others investors who always want to look for other opportunities to avoid paying tax, you know. So you bring in this, they find another way of uh, doing it the other way around. Yes, government can do better by, by looking at other options. Get, just concentrating on income and other benefits or capital gains on your investment might not be enough. And I think that is why people are thinking that it's quite a little way that the government wants to use to, to, to raise funds. But um, you compare what is done on other international platforms is not too different mm. to But the problem has to do with the magnitude of the tax that we are starting with. I'm personally of the view that, yes, we need to get a lot of people to pay tax who are taking huge um, allowances, must pay tax on those accounts. But certainly starting with a 20% tax on, on allowances, to me, I think is at the high side. At the end of the day, people might not really understand what all this is about. And once you try introducing this tax, they find another way to to avoid the tax. I see. Right. Godfrey many thanks for joining us here on Newsdesk with those thoughts. And uh, Godfrey Damehu, like I mentioned earlier, is a financial analyst and a lecturer at uh, Gimpa. He joined us with some thoughts on this development. I still have here with me in studio, John Kojo Mwakun, who is with our business desk. And uh, he has a lot more on this. He's been actually reading this law uh, and uh, he's joining us, trying to help us understand really uh, what it entails. So, John, you're telling us it's a threshold as far as this issue is concerned. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, if my gross is, at what point am I supposed to pay these Usually, the, 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 the threshold is determined by the minimum wage, you understand? So, let's say, um, assuming it ends at, say, 500 Ghana, then anybody who earns between um, 1 Ghana to 500 Ghana is un not, not taxable. Okay. And then any... Peswa beyond the 500 Ghana is taxable. That's where they apply that 15 percent, or sorry, yeah, that 20 percent rate you're talking about. But I think the disadvantage here, so far as this particular law is concerned, is that one, hitherto, okay, it was uh, minus allowances, but now your allowance is going to be consolidated, added onto your gross, and then you are taxed. So, what under normal circumstances, let's say. Initially, minus your allowances, you are, you are taking, you, 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 are, you are below that belt or you are below that threshold. Mm. You escape taxes. But now, plus your allowances, you exceed that threshold, so you are taxable. That's the only disadvantage. Otherwise, I think we need a lot more people to be brought into that bracket mm. so Ghana can actually make a lot more money. And then developmental projects like you are expecting, your roads, the hospital, the schools and all, would be constructing or be actually very good getting toward the destination that we want. That is, that's one disadvantage that I think it's with this law. As to whether, if, uh, for the individuals, it's a disadvantage. But to the state, it's, it's an innovation. No, it's but something if, new. If, if we say we are taxing anyone who earns above the minimum wage, I mean, that's practically everybody. That, that, that's what it is. 
that it what it is. They want to get a lot more people into the tax net. Okay, so they set a threshold. Beyond that threshold, you start paying. But the point is also that, uh, apart from this, the law also sort of like uh, grants some incentives. For, for example, mm. you, I don't know whether you, you've built a house, but if you are building a house, you either take a mortgage or probably take a loan for a loan to go and build your own house. Under those circumstances, the law says, okay, fine. I've been taxing you, but we want to bridge also like, uh, yeah, to bridge the housing deficit. Mm. So if you're going to contribute in bridging that deficit, then the interest that you're going to pay on your mortgage, the interest you're going to pay on the loan that you're going to use to build your first house, the catch is what? The first house, not the second house. The first house, that interest is going to be tax-free. You understand? So let's say your annual income is about, uh, or you take a loan of about, say, uh, 100000 to put up a house. Mm. And then the bank say they are charging you, say, 10%. That's about 10000 That 10000 will be deducted from your annual, um, your annual gross salary, and then the rest is ta taxed. You get it. So that's an advantage. And it is geared towards achieving a particular policy, which is to reduce the housing, the housing deficit. deficit. So it's a, much as we, we, we are crying that it's actually bringing in a lot more, which either two were not there, it's also sort of giving some incentive for you to do other things that under normal circumstances. That's for the high earners anyway. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> you can call it so, but I think mm. it's for everybody. Mm. It makes loans cheaper because... Uh, we are all crying that um, interest on loans today is very high. So if I you see. get the government to actually say, no, listen, I'm going to actually absorb your, the, 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 the taxes on the interest that you pay on these things. I think it's a good thing that we all should, I mean, we, sh we should applaud. But apart from that, mm. there are also other means of, uh, now they, are they, are, they, are, they want to go tax galam. Say people, something they've considered illegal over a period of time. I raised this argument yesterday there on that program. And they're saying, no, that, that's not the case. But then something they consider illegal, they want to tax them. Okay, that, that tells you how anxious and how aggressive the government wants to go to actually get everybody to contribute his or her quota to that kitty so we can also expand the economy and grow the economy. Apart from that, mm. for example, let's say you're a drug dealer somewhere bringing in or illegally transacting businesses here and there. The, the, the state is saying that they don't care the source of that money, irrespective of the source, they're going to tax you. So what, that, that, that's, that's encouraging money laundering to an extent. We asked that question, but they said the law... One, one fundamental principle of taxing is that it knows no morality. Tax, taxation knows no and, morality. And that was from the minister? That came from one, one, one consultant, but it's in the law. Mm. And it's one fundamental principle of taxation. It knows no morality. So it doesn't matter where you made your money from. The point is they will tax you before they report you to the, what they call the security authorities. That's exactly what it is. So <laughs> I'm sure uh, whatever it is that you take uh, anywhere, that will be... Uh, considered illegal, corrupt, or whatever it is, that the, 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 tax, the, the tax people are saying, come, we're going to tax you first. And if we should find out that uh, it was illegally obtained, then we hand you over to the police. But we need that money first before. So if an armed robber, let's say, builds a house or, like, say, operates a restaurant, that restaurant will be taxed. But, and later, if they find out that that uh, restaurant is being operated by an arm robber, then, then they actually they refer it to the, to the security agent. So that, these are some of the things right. that actually are in the law. And they've also expanded that with holding taxes. And also, apart from that, the, 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 the punitive measures here is also very, very punitive, if I put it that way. Interesting. In, seriously <laughs> speaking. So they're aggressive. And I think it's good. We need to do that. But what we are call, also calling for is that once, when they take the money, then the use of that money to must be transparent, must be put into very profitable and mm -hmm. very good use. Otherwise, it will be needless. It's right. like so, like a using basket that we always say to fetch water. Okay, you put it in here and it drains the other yeah. the other side. True. So I think these are True. some of the things. But they are saying that uh, your inputs are welcome. E everybody's input is welcome. So if you get to find some shortcomings with this law, that's what the law the law is there. Mm. They would amend it, make okay. sure it favors everybody. But for now. That's exactly the, the new law as amended. I see. Is that, yeah. More analysis on the marketplace, I believe, later today at uh, 1 p.m. on the same channel, your John News channel. John, many thanks for your time. You're and welcome. that's John Kujau Makon. In fact, he is host of the marketplace. And like I said, it will be airing later today at 1 p.m. You bring your a lot more analysis on this rather interesting development in the world of business. It affects you and me. My government is saying we're going to tax. I'm going for a break. I won't tax you for that, but I'm going for a break. When I come back, Emmanuel Abadji, you have to join us as we're more in business.